In this module, I'm going to tell you how to actually take photos for dating apps. I really do recommend pressing pause, grabbing yourself a hot drink, because seriously, this module is a lot longer and it's a lot more in depth because you're going to need a lot more. Not only that, if you do have a pen and paper handy or just notes on your phone, seriously, I recommend taking some notes because you're actually gonna be going out and taking some photos. To take these photos, you ideally need help from a family member or a friend, but if you don't have these to your disposal, I definitely recommend just purchasing a simple tripod for your phone or camera off Amazon. It does the same thing. Before I go any further, I want to actually tell you the goal of this module, and it is by the end of it, I want you to have some fantastic new photos of yourself to use for dating apps. That's the goal. But not only this, I want you to take photos of yourself that represent you in the way that you want to be represented. I want you to like the photos and be really proud of putting them on the dating apps and feel that it yeah, represents you in the way you want to be represented. Now, the key thing that we want to achieve here is to make a genuine profile. So if you have 10 new photographs of yourself wearing the same outfit on this photo shoot, people aren't really gonna think that profile is genuine. So we need to mix some of the older photos with some of the newer ones. I've split this module into five steps. So hopefully it's gonna be a little bit easier to consume. Knowing when to take your photos is a really big one because this is actually going to determine how good the photographs actually turn out. You've probably heard about this before, but there's a time called the twilight hour, which is just an hour after sunrise and an hour before sunset. Now, this is the time that I actually want you to be taking these photographs. You might find it quite hard to get those photographs in the morning because everybody's got work or college or university or whatever. So I actually think this is probably something that would be done best at the weekend as well if you're getting help from a family member or a friend. Obviously, this is an online training course and I can't physically help you. So I definitely recommend having somebody help you take these photographs around sunset. You'll definitely get those better, those better photos. Now, if you do have a digital SLR or a bridge camera, that's absolutely fine. But again, I'm gonna be assuming you've got a mobile phone. Now, if you've got a modern iPhone or a modern Android phone, seriously, the cameras on those are absolutely fantastic and they're definitely good enough for taking photos for a dating app. But if you do have an SLR or your friend has an SLR, take something with a 35 millimeter prime lens and ask that whoever's taking the photographs to get a shallow depth of field by opening the lens up. They'll know what I mean if you tell them this. Taking these photographs will honestly be 10 times easier if you have a family member or a friend who can help you out here. But like I said before, if you do go out and take some photographs by yourself, just take a tripod or one of those gorilla pods so that you can start taking photos and the camera isn't gonna fall over. Now, the tip that I would say, if you are having a friend take this, just, go, just be so upfront with them and say, I need some photos for my dating app. Can you spare a couple of hours? If they're a good friend, they'll be more than happy to help. As well, if you have any kind of remote shutter for your camera or your phone as well that's absolutely great because then you can just click away and get so many photographs without having to worry about looking back on them or who's taking them you can just keep going and also before we go any further we are not going to be taking a single photograph using the front facing selfie camera that is an absolute no-go when it comes to any kind of dating apps or any kind of socials we're not going to be using that camera ever again and now this is actually quite fun because I want you to find somewhere that is natural. So it could be a forest or it could be a wooded area, a waterfall or a beach, just something that isn't man-made. Ideally something, the more green it is, the better. You're gonna be getting so, such great photographs on there. So if you do go for a hike as well, take your camera or your phone so you can get some great photos. But not only that, I want you to find somewhere that's a little bit industrial as well. So if you know of any old factories or you know of any shopping centers or just anything that has brightly colored walls or kind of run down buildings and just something that's a little bit more urban and cool, definitely try and find for a location like that. The thing is that I'd say about this, there's no hard set rules of where you have to go. Just go anywhere that looks interesting. Seriously, you can get some fantastic photographs in car parks, you can get some great photographs in woods. It doesn't matter, you've just gotta find different places and maybe go to three or four different places. And if you get to somewhere and you think, this doesn't look that great, try somewhere else. It's, it, there's no hard set rules for it. You just need a background that's a little bit interesting and ideally something with some color. Whenever I give dating app coaching, one of the things that I get asked a lot is, what should I wear for my first date? Or what should I wear for my dating app photos? 
And truth be told, it actually really doesn't matter. This all comes down to your personal style. But the things that I would say is that whatever you do wear, make sure that it fits you, the clothing of item is in good condition and it's clean as well. So make sure you press your shirts, press your trousers, make sure there's no holes in or anything, make sure your shoes aren't dirty and horrible. And in general, give the clothing that you're going to be wearing an inspection and think, does this represent me in the way that I want to be represented? Just remember, people pick up really small things about clothing. So if you do have a t-shirt that you really like, it's got a hole in it, just don't use it for your dating app photos or first date even. I usually say to people as well, just wear whatever you feel comfortable, but I guess this isn't the advice that you want to hear, so I'm gonna spell it out for you. For these photos, try and go with just a simple pair of jeans and a shirt or a t-shirt, or even better, take both. If you take two or three t-shirts, a couple of shirts, a couple of pairs of trousers, maybe a different pair of shoes with you when you take these photographs, you're gonna have a wide range of shots and it doesn't look like you've just all taken them in one go. Not only that, it would give your profile a feeling of authenticity a lot more if you've got different outfits that look like the photos have been taken at different times rather than just all the same t-shirt in every single photo. I've seen so much terrible advice online which gives guys advice about what kind of t-shirts they need to wear because it attracts this type of woman or whatever. It, it, it doesn't matter at all. Regardless of your gender, just wear the clean clothes that fit. Seriously, the color doesn't matter that much. Whatever is your personal style, that is absolutely fine. So the thing is that I would say as well, before you go for these photographs, try and get a haircut just to spruce yourself up a little bit and make sure you're looking after yourself as well. Clip your nails, clean your hands, have a shower, do absolutely everything to get yourself as clean as possible. I know this is a really small thing, but you find a lot of the time, if you've had a tough year because of COVID or whatnot, sometimes self-care is one of those things that's a little bit harder, but this is the time that you want to really go forward and represent yourself in, in, a, in a great manner. So get that haircut, trim those nails, and also make sure you're moisturizing your face and in general, just look after yourself. There's other tips online as well of things that you can do to make to look after yourself. You never really appreciate this a lot of the time until you see some photographs of somebody before and after when once they've looked after themselves. If you are cutting your nails and getting a haircut and you know, just remember as well, the vast majority of people want someone who looks after themselves physically. So it doesn't have to be an expensive haircut or anything, just get that haircut put some moisturizer on, make sure that your nails are trimmed, that your clothes are clean. Just look after yourself. You will look so much better in these photographs, I promise. So I'm guessing you followed the previous tips to an absolute T, which is fantastic to hear. And if you haven't, definitely go back because there's some great information there if I say so myself. Now you've got the time of your shoot, you've got the location, you've got the grooming tips and also the clothing tips, and it's actually time to go out and take those photos. As I mentioned before, I really recommend that you get these tips down on paper or just notes in your phone because whoever's taking these photographs of you or if you're doing it yourselves, these are the kind of photographs that I want you to get. Close up, looking at the camera and smiling, I want you to get 20 photographs. Close up, looking away from the camera, but still smiling, 20 photographs. Sitting down, smiling and looking at the camera a little bit further away this time. Again, 20 photographs. Standing 10 feet away from the camera, smiling, but looking away, I want you to get 20 photographs. Sitting down with the camera 10 feet away and pretending how to build a miniature house with your hands. Now, like this, I know it might sound really silly, but you've got to remember you have a freeze frame and a lot of the photographs that are better are when you're showing an activity. Trust me on this one. Now, here's one I want you to get as well. I want you to tell the worst jokes you can think of to the camera and I want your friend, or even if you're just using it on your tripod, just to be snapping away while you're explaining these. Sometimes when you're told to smile, it doesn't come about very genuine, but if you are genuinely having a back and forth conversation with somebody telling some terrible jokes and you're actually laughing, these kind of photographs will be 10 times more genuine and people really pick up on this. Don't worry if you feel a little bit silly if you're actually doing this because it's meant to feel silly and you'll get some better photographs of yourself genuinely smiling rather than just standing there and pretending to smile. Now you might think trying to go out there and get 100 photographs is gonna be absolutely impossible but the one thing that I wanted to say is that if you are asking a friend or family member to do this or you're doing it with a tripod, it doesn't matter. You just need to keep clicking. You've got to say to that person, you want a minimum of 100 photos. So if you just stand there and smile and they take a photo, it's not gonna be very genuine. 
you need to be talking to them, you need to be looking at the camera, looking away, you just need as many photographs as possible. So say to them, you want a minimum of 100 photographs and they just need to keep snapping. Because what happens is, if you come away with 100 photographs, you'll have 90 that are terrible, that you're half blinking and, and it's not looking good, but you'll find 10 that are absolutely amazing. And you will think, wow, I actually really like that photo. This is talking from a photographer with over 10 years of experience in the fashion, editorial and commercial. Trust me, you need to get these types of photographs to represent yourself in a great way. And as well, remember, you don't have to just stand there doing nothing. If you've got a dog or some kind of prop, that would be absolutely amazing. So yeah, if you do have a dog, definitely, definitely take your dog for a walk with you. Get some really cute photographs of you and your dog. And don't feel stupid as well, laying down or sitting down, cuddling the dog or whatever. It really is just showing your softer side a lot of the time on dating apps. Now you're probably sitting there thinking what is this guy on about giving me all these weird tips and types of photographs that I need to get. Now I want to explain that I used to do a lot of corporate headshots and in generally corporate photography and also portraits. Now if somebody just says to you sit there and smile you're quite shriveled up and your face shrivels up and you're just not that loose. But when you're told to do mundane things like tell jokes or show how a house is built with your hands and, and, and just silly things like that, the kind of photographs that you get are 10 times better. Seriously, just try it and trust me on it. When something is too scripted, it doesn't really look real or genuine. So when you do have some photos, you just, you know, putting a jacket on or or you know, or just you know, doing something silly with your hands or telling jokes, you get a genuine smile rather than something that is just forced. And as well, it might sound like a lot of effort to take 100 photographs, but it's really not. If you're just getting something to snap away again and again and again, you can literally get 100 photographs in about 10 minutes. Even if you get more than that, if you get a thousand, that's better. You just have more photographs to actually select. But try not to come back until you've got that magic 100 photographs because seriously, you need loads of photographs for this to work. When you are photographing, make sure you always try and be side on from the sun because if you take a photograph with direct sunlight in front of you or behind you, you're either gonna be squinting or the camera won't pick you up because you'll just be in the shadow. Now we've got to the stage which is called post shoot and that is you came home and you've got all of those photographs. Now I want you to look through them and find 10 of them that you really like. Like I said before, if you've taken over 100, there'll be so many photographs of you squinting or blinking or just not that great, but you just want to try and find 10, ideally wearing the different outfits as well. Once you've done this, it's now time to edit them. And the first thing that I would say is you want to edit them with a mobile device in mind. So if you use Tinder, Bumble or Hinge or any other dating app, 99% of them are on mobile devices these days so we need to crop them into a portrait i want you to edit a handful of them that you quite like as well in black and white and the rest of them just in straight color but i want you to really try and make those colors pop so the clarity the brilliance and also the saturation turn those up just a little bit but just enough so that those colors pop the editing on them should be a fairly hard crop as well again you want it in a portrait mode here's an example Just to show you how much difference selecting and retouching a photo with just some color correction and cropping. Here's a photograph that I did of a client a while ago and as you can see, there's a massive difference. There was only about a two minute time difference of when these photographs were taken and as you can see, there's a massive amount of difference. And essentially, when people view your profiles on dating apps, you want to have the best photos possible. Okay, so now we're at the end of this module and I'm assuming you're back from the shoot, but if you're not, go back to the start of this module and watch it again, possibly take some notes because when you go out and take those photographs, I want you to get as many as possible and it will just make this process 10 times easier. Mm -hmm.